Well, hello. Um, I am Sebastian. Um, I am going to present today uh, my presentation regarding um, hiding sensitive parameters connecting to BigQuery using OAuth authentication, which is basically what we had to do in order to um, to connect um, to OAuth directly from within SAS, uh, basically only using SAS functions. So let's get started. First of all, a little bit about me. Um, I am uh, I am an SRD and uh, support lead on Equifax uh, for the for a, for a sandbox environment that is used on, uh, here on Equifax. Yeah, uh, we support a lot of platforms on my team. We including SaaS. We also have Hadoop, Python, R, G, uh, things in GCP like BigQuery, things like that. I've uh, been working on this for around five years now and um, um, assuming the role of a SaaS admin as well as a lot of things. So, um, yeah, um, the, the main uh, reason why I started working with SaaS is, uh, is because, in, yeah, to support to what was already there, but then going to uh, GCP, I, I, start, uh, I started working on all this, right? I am based in Chile, in Santiago. My English is my second language, so forgive me in advance if uh, something doesn't, uh, uh, if I get a little bit stuck uh, at some times, but yeah, it's just because of that. Uh, what else can I say about myself? Well, I, I love cats, I love dogs. I have two beautiful cats at home, thank you for me. But um, yeah, um, that's basically it about me. So. I just want to talk a little bit about uh, why am I doing, uh, why did we have to do all this? Uh, first of all, um, we had to migrate uh, a system, a SaaS system, uh, SaaS 9.4 that we had uh, running on premises. Uh, we had um, our own servers running SaaS, uh, connecting to data that was um, uh, stored in Hadoop. Right, and uh, from there we had to go to to the cloud, right? So we could um, uh, the commission our own prem systems and all that. So we decided to go for this application to GCP. Uh, so the data instead of uh, being in Hadoop, we had to put it in BigQuery, right? And uh, the way that we put the data in BigQuery is basically data sets and in the data sets, the tables and the access to each table, access to each data set is managed through Google groups, right? So that each user can access the environment with whatever tool they have, right? Since, you know, we have a lot of tools, so that is one of them. Uh, so Google groups was the way that it was, uh, that it was um, um, considered that it was the best, right? So. That's uh, so from within SaaS, then the users, the idea is that they would access using the SaaS access engine for BigQuery, which is, uh, which already exists, is available. It was available in SaaS via 9.4, it's available in SaaS via, uh, sorry, SaaS 9.4, SaaS via 3.4, 3.5. So the users were going to use that, but um, authentication would be an issue, right? Because uh, the way that uh, BigQuery works, the, the engine to BigQuery works, is that uh, it expects you to use a service account, right? Uh, the main example says that, yeah, you have to use uh, a credential file, which on one hand is forbidden in the Equifax environment, so we couldn't use that. We could use other ways of authenticating with a service account, but uh, yeah, um, Accessing, uh, giving the access to the to all the tables, and then uh, working in SaaS in order to replicate the authorization model is what's going to be a lot of work to implement to maintain. So it was something of something that of a no go, right? So we saw that we had OAuth authentication, right? Uh, which is uh, which is much better because that means that the users can use their own their own authorizations to access within SaaS, right? So they have a session and the session is authenticated with their own user in Google. So Google is going to let them let them in whatever they need. So no need to no need to worry about the authorization. 
no need to worry about service accounts or anything like that. But um, the problem here is that, uh, that in order to declare a library using BigQuery, using auth authentication, we need to provide the client ID, we need to provide the client secret, we need to provide the reference token, which uh, of course is not ideal, right? Um, I cannot give the client ID, the client secret to the users. And honestly, I cannot expect the users to manage their own refresh tokens, right? So to, to authenticate and then put the refresh token and all that, that is not necessarily a, a good thing with the users that we have. We just want the users to worry about executing their code, sorry, uh, about uh, creating their code, executing it, access, access whatever they need, and then not having to worry about authentication and all that stuff. And also take take security off our back. So um, the solution that we thought about and that we have already implemented here is about using macros to help the users authenticate, right? So first of all, the idea is, of course, to uh, hide those sensitive parameters, right? The client ID, the client secret, they need to be hidden. So, so we start by the fact that, uh, yeah, we can hide those by putting it in the macros and then use a stored compiled encrypted facility, right? Which is something that uh, can be used to hide code, how it works and all that. So you can protect uh, a code that may be intellectual property, things like that. That is what it's useful. But uh, I thought, well, maybe we can go ahead and hide the parameters there. So, so we can use that. And uh, also, since we have proc HTTP, I can actually make the API calls for the OAuth facility in Google directly from within SAS. And I think that's the, that's the magic of it. The fact that we can craft this HTTP uh, request and then send them to Google, get a response, and then handle that response accordingly so that the user, the only thing they have to do is get an authorization code and then use the authorization code to run a macro and that takes care of everything. And then the user can go ahead and create their library so they can connect to a BigQuery dataset. And uh, we also implemented uh, um, with the same HD, with a couple of more HTTP calls, um, a way of getting the client ID and client secret using Vault in this case. So you can use secret management tools to handle that client ID, client secret. So in case you need to change it, if you need to change the secret, anything like that, you can do that. So that is basically what I'm going to go through in this presentation, right? How we did this. So we're going to go into the technical details about it. So first of all, a little bit about how the flow is going to work on this. Basically, we need to get, we are running in a compute server that is running in GCP, right? Uh, this is a virtual machine, um, and as such, that virtual machine has a default service account, which we can use to uh, get a JWT, a token, and that token can be used in HashiCorp Vault in order to uh, authenticate, right? We can get a login token, and then with the login token, we can get the client ID, client secret, save that information uh, in memory, and then and then execute the auth login request, uh, get the replies, and then and then with another with another um, uh, function we can go ahead and connect to BigQuery, right? So that's basically in high level what we are doing. Now in low level what we are doing, first of all we need to handle the HTTP responses, right? Uh, because it all sounds like yeah we can uh, do HTTP responses and. Um, and everything works well, but it's not as easy as using Postman, of course, because we are, within, we are within SAS. So first of all, how do we make sure that, the, the, um, that we have a place where to write the data? Uh, is it going to be in memory? Is it going to be in a file? The answer is it's going to be in a file. So whenever we need to create a, a file so that we can receive the HTTP response, I'm using a macro that I got from somewhere. I have it somewhere, the, the source of it, to generate a random name 
Uh, then that random name, I use it to create a file name uh, object, right, here in SAS. And then, and that file name is going to live in, um, it can live either on a memory, like um, like in a in temp or, or, or similar, or if we need to save the file, we can save it somewhere else, right? So, so it persists for a little bit more. But usually we create it in a special memory device, right? So so that the so that it's not um, so it can be lost after a, after a, after a bit, right? It's because we are handling authentication tokens and things like that. So we need to we need to lose that pretty quickly, right? So um, after that, uh, this is the um, routine that we use to connect to Vault, right? And the way that we connect to Vault is a little bit more convoluted. You can see that we have proc HTTP uh, inside that do uh, until uh, because because in order to connect, we we want to handle errors and things like that. So that is why we have some a little bit of retrieve retry logic. So we execute the proc HTTP and then we check. Um, we check the special variables that are set by this proc HTTP, right? To make sure that uh, the status code is 200 or not, or if we need to re retry, et cetera, et cetera, right? Now, um, once we have that information, we can create another proc HTTP with the, with the information that we have. Just read that, pass namespace token, because we have identity token and we have login token, and then we get the secrets, which is in this slide over here. We, when we get the secrets from Vault, uh, that is put in a file, but that file is a JSON file, right? Uh, so we can parse it using JSON appropriately, right? So from this JSON, I can get the client ID and client secret uh, using lines five and six uh, in the, um, these calls, right? They will set variables client, client ID, variable client secret, and we use this, right? Uh, first of all, to, to get this, uh, these variables from the proc JSON. And then you will see later how we're using them to set more variables depending on more responses, right? So we have the secrets. And then we're going to use them, first of all, to create, to get a refresh token. The refresh, so what we did here is that we implemented the Google OAuth uh, authentication routine in SAS, right? So what we need to do is um, the user in the first, uh, the user um, first needs to get to a site in order to, in order to get an authorization code, which is this code that appears here in the um, line nine rec code, right? And uh, in the equivalent HTTP request is just the code parameter, right? We get the client ID, the client secret, um, we don't set any, we, we set the redirect URI, this special redirect URI, so that it doesn't really, uh, so that um, uh, give us the, the information that we need, which is the refresh token and other things that, uh, that, uh, that come with the, with the API, right? So we set all the parameters and then call the proc HTTP. Um, we save it in RESP, which is in home, as it says in line two, uh, so we can use it later, right? And then once that macro is ready, what we do is with another macro that you can see the, um, the declaration here, we um, are going to create the library uh, using these hidden parameters that we got from Vault and there are, they are going to be, um, they are going to be fed once we execute the macro. So every time we execute the macro, we go to Vault, we get the parameters and then we use them to connect, right? We are not catching them in any way so that they cannot be found because problem is that uh, everything that is created here is created with the user's permission. So in order to avoid having any to, to try to minimize the amount of things that the user can see. We just do more requests and things like that. So this is how we um, 
we created the macro uh, by adding the parameters first and um, sorry by adding the libref first so that is going to be the name and then all the supported parameters that are in the documentation and then with those parameters there we start checking parameter by parameter and um, this can be out, this can be slightly automated, right? But if you have um, I, 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 myself using Visual Studio Code, I could just put every single if, then then else do, etc., etc., etc. That wasn't that hard, right? Um, I didn't have to type everything, just one line, and then that gets uh, uh, spread out uh, with all the parameters, right? So it's not that much for toil. But uh, yeah, you need to do this for every single parameter. Check if it's set or not. If it's set, we add it to the declaration. If not, we don't add anything. So the, so when we don't add anything, we use the default, right? So there is the libref, but then if someone uh, sets, for example, the project, it's going to be set. If we set the qualifier, it's going to be set. We set the scheme, it's going to be set. But if we don't, then it's not set, so uh, it's just it just passes as default, right? So finally, um, after all of that, we just put the secret credentials there. Uh, so we read that the client ID, the client secret is read already from from Vault, as we saw before, right? We call the client ID the client secret, right? And then, um, and then we set the refresh token parameter. Um, those client ID, client secret, and refresh token are passed to the the live name declaration, and then the live name declaration ends, and uh, the macro ends. So after that macro is executed, you should have a library in your uh, available for you using those. Um, using those secret parameters and the refresh token without you needing to see the refresh at all. So um, I'm also putting this here, how we actually uh, made this available to the users. So the way that we did this is that I basically compiled the macro uh, using those options right there. And then if you see before, the, the way that the, the macro is started, if you give me just one second to go back, you see that it, you see that the last line there says store secure, right? So those parameters are store secure. What they do is that they say that the macro needs to be saved and it also needs to be encrypted. So what is it saved on the M stored location, which is set, which I said here at the beginning of the of my session. So I set a link named MacroLib and I put the option store M stored, SAS M stored, MacroLib. So anything that I say is going to be saved there, right? And then I execute the macro definition that encrypts and saves everything. And then I have a SAS 7B cat file that I can make available to the rest of the users. How do I make it available to the rest of the users? I put it on a common location, right? In uh, available to all the users, every user can read it, but no one can write to it. And then, sorry, and then in the auto exec, I can uh, set the, those same parameters, like, right, leave them macro leave something, and then options and store, SAS and store, macro leave. That means that every time a new session starts, the session will have those parameters available immediately. Uh, that means that the users cannot use the stored macros anymore, right? Without uh, losing those those first macros that I'm setting for them. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's something that we have to do. Um, and uh, then again, the users can use the macro and then set another location so they can use other macros. And that doesn't mean that the that the library is going to be lost in the session. So I think it's a good. Um, it's a good try back, I think. So uh, I want to make a quick demonstration here. Uh, it's not a it's not a recorded demo, so don't worry. It's just um, just um, screenshots, right? So the way that we do this is actually very uh, very uh, straightforward, right? 
the users have a link login to Google, which is this is if you have ever used uh, the G Cloud SDK, the console, when you try to log in, it cre it makes um, a link for you where you can authenticate and then and then provide authorization to the um, to the um, to the application, right? So you log in and then yeah, I allow uh, the application to access my, my data, and uh, it's going to do it on GCP and in BigQuery. It will give you an authorization code, which um, which is only valid for one time, and then you take that authorization code and run the first macro, which is get refresh token. The parameter being that, right? Um, so if that is correct, then you can run this the second macro using um, BQ Connect, and that BQ Connect macro is going to take the parameters that you got on the first macro execution and then uh, create a new library, right? Uh, and the library is there uh, once you do that execution. If you don't have uh, permissions, it's going to fail somehow. Uh, but uh, if everything is okay, you can see the library in there and you can see the tables, all of that. So um, that is what we did, uh, but it's not everything that we can do with this, right? Uh, it, um, um, of course you can, since we can basically craft any HTTP request with enough time, we can access any, access, sorry, we can access any uh, service from GCP directly from within SAS, right? We have the access token, so we can uh, use those APIs that require the access token. And actually, there are some users here on another um, on another department in Equifax that have actually uh, created a macro based on mine uh, in order to download a file from a GCP bucket. And uh, in order to do that, they have to use this access token. So, so yeah, the users have been uh, the, some other uh, some other brilliant minds here in Equifax have been able to take my code and extend it and make more things uh, with this that we are doing in order to access only BigQuery um, because my department basically only uses BigQuery. They are using them to download files from GCP buckets and potentially you could be interacting with Bigtable, with PubSub um, to trigger things from within SAS. So yeah, I would say the possibilities are endless here. So. Uh, yeah. Um, so um, before I finish, I just want to say, right, because that was the last slide. Um, in the end, the, the reason why we started this is because we didn't have any way uh, within from within SAS of configuring or auth authentication, right? So it would be a good improvement that SAS itself is able to handle this default auth a provider, for example, and in order and and the users should just need to pro to give a provider or use a default provider to give the client ID, client secret, and handle all that authorization flow uh, in the background. We need to bring it to the foreground because we had no other option. But of course, it would be much better if we could uh, do it uh, from within SAS, right? Uh, implement that from within. So that uh, it can be available not only for SAS. You, you see, we are using only macros, so this is only for SAS Studio or for batch SAS. But uh, it could be useful for other analytic tools from within the ecosystem. But uh, yeah, that has been my presentation. And um, uh, any questions? I will be waiting for them. Uh, thank you so much for listening.